Today, on Kathy in the Community, Kathy visits with the president of the Worldwide Women's Film Festival, Kim Haneke, about this year's festival. Kim shares with Kathy the changes the festival has undergone during its 2021 hiatus, as well as what parts of the world some of this year's exciting films hail from. So stick around for this engaging interview as Kathy Blaze ventures out of the studio and into the community desert with days with Kathy Blaze worked so tirelessly to support. Thank you for joining us today here at Kathy in the Community. Today I am here with Miss Kim Haneke. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, Kathy. It's great to be here. Such a pleasure. So we are here because you have the Worldwide Women's Festival February 18th through the 20th, correct? You bet you we do, and we're going to have fun. So excited, so yeah. excited. So I know that you guys didn't have one in 2021 due to COVID. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we felt horrible about canceling it, but we just decided let's just give everybody a break and just, you know, deal with lives and all that, but let's come back in 2022 and have some fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, it gave you time to really put some thought into what you want to bring in 2022. I um, like to give a little overview of what your audience saw in 2020. What, 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 what was the show? How do you explain 2020? Um, it was just amazing. The films were off the charts. I mean, the documentaries, the features, the shorts, the music videos, the subject matters, they were all brilliant. And everybody was so kind and nice. It just, that weekend, it's like, you just, vi I vibrated just from all the energy in the room. It was just phenomenal. That's awesome. And we, we've we uh, met on uh, one of our shows, Desert Days, before, and you yeah. spoke about um, Worldwide Women's Festival and why this event was needed and created. Mm -hmm. Can you just give, give our audience just a little bit about that again? Oh, absolutely. The film festival was created to highlight women filmmakers and women storytellers. And it's really important to know that guys are allowed in the festival. Right. We just have two requirements for our festival. One, you need a woman behind the camera in a principal role. Director, producer, cinematographer, you know, screenwriter. That's easy. And it needs to be a woman's centered story. So like two guys talking about a gal walking down the street, no, that's not gonna cut mm. it, yeah. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And you know what? It's great to give them women that platform to be able to be behind the camera, to mm -hmm. to be able to direct, to produce, and to do all those things that you've given them the opportunity to do. And not only, this is worldwide. So yeah. you're getting films from all over the place. Tell me about a few of your most exciting places that you've received films from. Well, so far we received a film from Iran and um, Australia, that film's opening up the festival, Strong Female Lead. It's a good film. Wonderful. And then, you know, London, France, Spain, Slavia, or Ser Serbia, that's Serbia. it, excuse me, Serbia. So that's just some of the uh, places that we've gotten films from. Are there any, what are some of the restrictions that you have when submitting to um, the film festival? Well, like I said, our res the restrictions we have, um, you gotta have a f female behind the camera and it has to be a woman-centered story. Mm. Now, can it be telling a disgraceful story about women? No. Can it have nudity in it? Implied's okay, mm -hmm. but full frontal, no, that, that's not cool. And also, we take our subject matters really seriously. You know, like, you know, female mutilation, we take okay. that very seriously. And there is a film in the festival that has this, but you don't see anything. It's talked right, about. Right. And we do have warnings, you know, on the films like, you know, nudity or implied nudity mm -hmm. or 
female mutilation and you know we do have some films on rape you don't see anything Mm -hmm. but we do put those triggers on there just in case you know you don't want to see it you know we want you to make an informed decision so there is some things you don't touch in um with your submissions correct yes yes okay Mm -hmm. i'd like to hear about um we spoke about some of the countries that you've gotten submissions what are some of the exciting films because you know a lot of us we don't get to see some of these exciting films from other countries unless we come to a film festival right so you know this year we're really excited like i said that strong female lead is from australia and it's opening up the festival it's kind of unusual to do a documentary feature but we really think this will set the tone for the film festival. It's a very well done film. And then we have another one. It's a short called Quiet on the Set, and it's subtitled. And it talks about, you know, what happens to women on a set. And that's an international film as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then if I could, like, maybe talk about some of the films in the past that we've had. Sure. Okay. Um, Back in 2020, we had a film from Israel, and it was called Red. It was about a girl getting her period for the very first time. You would not think that that would be an interesting subject matter, Mm. but the way the filmmaker did it, it was really interesting. You know, the girl didn't like it. Mom was all excited, and her brother's like, you know, whatever. And Dad, you know, didn't care. And it was just filmed in two rooms, the kitchen and the bathroom. That's it. It was a film that I really was so honored to have in the festival. It was really well done. Awesome. Awesome. I I love that because, you know what, that is such a teachable film right there. Mm -hmm. Teach our young girls about starting their period and... We know dad and brother don't care, but <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. They're like, you yeah. weirdo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so you have, are all your films shorts? No, we've got features, you know, straight features, you know, shorts, documentary features, and music videos. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't yeah. know that you have vi- music, vis- music videos as well. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um... The festival takes place February 18th through the 20th. Is there a, um, what what was those dates selected? Well, we were going to have it this weekend. However, it was the, I believe the Super Bowls this weekend and the Phoenix Open. Okay. We didn't want to clash with them because everybody will be at our festival instead of theirs. So, you know, we gave them a a break. You, you, could have, you could have beat the Super Bowl. Come on. Yeah, I know that, but you know, we were being nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I was thinking that it was created because isn't there, um, is it Worldwide Women's Day or something? Is it in February or is it in March? It's actually February 8th or the 10th, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at a Worldwide Women's Festival, what can your audience expect in those three days? Wow. Um, well, films that you'll get to see, amazing films, great topics. You get to come to some great after parties. Um, they start on Friday and Saturday night at 9 o'clock at El Capo Pizzeria. It's just right across the way from uh, the Shea 14s where we're at. Okay. And we are having some workshops in, on Saturday as well, too, which are free to the public to attend. And what does the workshop consist of? Well, the workshop is, we have two. One is, you know, interviewing 101, how to interview on the red carpet. Uh, most filmmakers don't really know how to interview on the, the runway, you know, so... You know, Ava Lewis with Chronic Behavior, she's going to come in and teach filmmakers how to interview on the red carpet. And then we have uh, Ask a Pod, Ask a Filmmaker. That's a podcast, and it and Ava's going to talk to, you know, filmmakers about, you know, a topic, and it's going to be, you know, obviously a podcast, and it's mm-hmm. going to be, you know, 
recorded live. So yeah. Okay. Is that something that um, your audience would have to register for for those workshops? Oh no, they can just come. Okay, they can just come. That is awesome. So you said the yeah. event is taking place at Shea Fourteen. Mm -hmm. So there'll be plenty of popcorn. Oh yeah, popcorn, <laughs> milk duds, uh, raisinets, uh, red vines, uh, pop. You can't so, you can't go see a bunch of films without having all those items. Oh, heck no. <laughs> heck no. You'll probably be seeing me, you know, munching some popcorn in the lobby and stuff like that. So at this point, um, what what are what are your needs right now for the festival? Um, well, we are a 501c3, so making donations would always be helpful. Uh, we always could use volunteers because I know we've got a couple of uh, sections left open. So some volunteers would be awesome. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So at um, this point, we, we, we're in need of volunteers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, where would they um, register to volunteer? Well, they can uh, either shoot us an, an email on our website, or they can go to w w w that's three w's f f two f's volunteers with an s at the end at gmail.com okay I'd, I'd like to also ask a question um kim you're the president of the worldwide women's festival yes i am wonderful congratulations okay. thank you and i know that you've been working on this since its inception correct that is correct what is some, what is the biggest change that you've seen within those two years um i would say COVID. you know because we have to be more careful now so we do you know follow the cdc guidelines you know what and harkins wants us to follow so we will have you know hand sanitizer at the registration tables we will have extra masks at the registration tables. We do ask that, you know, the film goers wear masks. Okay. Is it required? No, okay. but we do encourage it. Now, if you want to do some serious munching on popcorn and all that, of course, we want you to take your mask off. Yeah. But, you know, to be respectful of everyone, do you need to show us vaccination cards? No, you do not. So, um, talking about safety with COVID, mm -hmm. how are you guys doing your part? I mean, we have the mask, we have the sanitation. As far as the seating, are you doing any spacing or how are you guys handling that part? We are not doing uh, like six feet apart where there's no social distancing. It's okay. just, you know, everyone can come in and sit wherever they'd like. Okay, okay. So I, I'd also like to ask, I was speaking about changes that you've seen in the last uh, few years. Mm -hmm. Are there any major changes that you've seen with the festival in the last couple of years? Well, actually, yes. We took it from a for-profit to a non-profit, and that was really challenging, uh, you know, working with lawyers and nonprofit CPAs and getting all that paperwork done and, and things of that nature. Okay, yeah. so may I ask, what was it that um, pushed the change to go from for-profit to nonprofit? Well, for a nonprofit, you can apply for grants and mm -hmm. get additional funding for things and to grow the film festival the way we want to. Uh -huh. It was really a beneficial for us to go nonprofit. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. That's great to hear. So this is a worldwide film festival that was um, started here in Arizona. Do mm -hmm. you foresee this going to other states? Well, for right now, no. No. But am I open to some, like, partnerships with other states? You betcha. That's wonderful. That's one. But it's worldwide, so yeah. I... You can have people submit from all over the place, so that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. What can we expect new for the Worldwide Film Festival? Well, you know, like I said, uh, we're a nonprofit. We've got a board of some really great people, um, amazing new films, wonderful new volunteers, and just a really good, positive experience for the film festival and coming and enjoying being with other people that love film and other female filmmakers and just enjoying. 
That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. And it is so great to see that we have something that is geared to for the, the female population and to get them training in all the areas of filmmaking. Oh, totally. And also, you know, to inspire, you know, young girls. Well, oh, wow. I want to do that. And that lady can do it. So maybe I can do it. But the one thing that's really missing this year is student films mm. because of COVID. Oh. So, you know, we were really bummed out about that, but it's one of those things. It's like, well, what are you going to do? Was that due to the schools? Um, why was there a problem with the um, student films? Well, usually um, the kids would do the films for a project for school. Uh -huh. And, you know, during COVID, everything was on lockdown. So, and we were really trying to understand this disease and all this. So, right. you know, everybody, you know, was, you know, afraid and just staying put. So, yeah, that's that's why we have no student films. Oh, that's, yeah. So, throughout the year, once the film festival is over, what are you doing to prepare, say, for 2023? Well, what we do is we close the books, we mail out the awards to the filmmakers that didn't come. We debrief, and then we start going. We start going to open up submissions, and put in place what we learned from this year into next year. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. So I know that you said that there's a three day. This is a three day event. The first day, the 18th. What can we expect? Um, that's opening night from 6 till about 10.34 is the films. 9 o'clock starts the um, party at El Capo Pizzeria. Okay. And then on Saturday, films, we have two theaters. Okay. Uh, they start about 9.15, and they go all the way up to about 10, 11 o'clock at night. And the award ceremony is Saturday night, starting around 9-ish. And that's going to be at El Capo Pizzeria, and that's where one lucky cinematographer will be presented with the sixty thousand dollar rental camera rental camera package from Panavision. Wow! Yeah, and then Sunday we have our filmmaker breakfast, which is open to the public. It's going to be here from ten to about eleven thirty, and that is talking about the Crown Act, and that's thirty dollars to to come. Okay. But I'm going to tell you just a brief tidbit about the Crown Act. The Crown Act, now it's against the law to be discriminated against due to hair, the texture of your hair and the color and and all that. And it's really important. And mm -hmm. we want to educate, you know, everybody about this because it's such a new law that's been in, put in place. So, right. you know, we want to get everybody associated with the arts in to check it out. And then films go from noon to like seven o'clock at night and then the festival's Wonderful. over i yeah. love that why is someone concerned about my hair texture <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't get that they don't have to comb it for me <laughs> yeah but that is something that we that's a challenge yeah and that's a challenge in the in the work and in, in the workplace yeah that your hairstyles or your yeah. texture or things mm -hmm. like that so it, it needs to be challenged oh yeah and also too like directors like if you were on a set and they didn't like your hair your hair color mm. they would you know like change it and they can't do that mm. yeah so it's pretty important well, that is awesome. So where can our audience reach you? Well, you can reach me at the Worldwide Women's Film Festival, www.filmfestival.org. And when do your tickets start to close? Well, our tickets are open. Like for Friday, Fridays, they close on Friday. Okay. And then Saturdays, you know, they close at Saturday. But you could... Like Saturday at midnight, they close. And okay. then Sundays closes at like 7 o'clock at night. So awesome. you can still buy tickets the day of. Oh, okay, that's yeah. awesome to know. Yeah. Well, it was such a pleasure to interview you and speak about the Worldwide Film Festival. And we look forward to being there. 
Well, thank you so much for um, having me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you and everybody else coming. Wonderful. And thank you for joining us today here at Kathy in the Community. You are watching the Dream Network channel. Desertwood. Reality. Entertainment. Art. And music. The Dream Network channel. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, and now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild, and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind. Take this time to talk and get it right. You know I'll be there all your life When you need me, I'll be by your side By your side And every day is a different day Everything is in everything Even when you think things can never ever be the same Don't be scared of the world, I'll be here to stay By your side Even when your heart ain't listening Or your mind takes you a different way When the adults in a child's life talk early and often about the dangers of underage drinking, the message gets stronger every time. I'll be by your side. Talk. They hear you. Tune in here weekdays to watch Arizona's hottest new talk show, Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze. New episodes available exclusively here at 3 p.m. with a repeat at 7 p.m. on the Dream Network channel through the free local BTV app available for Apple and Android devices. Uh, Miss Stevens, I just wiped malware off our system. Uh, people have got to stop clicking unsolicited email links and downloading free software unless it's from a trusted source. Sounds great. We need a data backup plan in a separate location in case we get hacked. We need to focus on making profits, not spending them. Learn to protect yourself from ransomware. If you become a victim, contact your local FBI office. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. It's the way you walk. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of made some really nice sounds. I like this music. I feel amped about today, inspired musically about life. There's a 
that I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw it do it. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind. Take this time to talk and get it right. You know I'll be there all your life. When you need me, I'll be by your side. By your side. And every day is a different day. Everything is in everything. When the adults in a child's life talk early and often about the dangers of underage drinking, the message gets stronger every time. I'll be by your side. Talk. They hear you. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening guys? And they told me they were making music. A lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of made some really nice sounds. I like this music. I feel amped about today, inspired musically about life. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. I saw it do it. Excuse me, Dan, but you should be alert when you are cooking and keep anything that can catch fire away from the stovetop. Good job, Dan. NFPA.org.